A couple years ago, Toyota discontinued in the United States its longest running nameplate, the Land Cruiser. I'm talking about the legendary SUV that was originally called the Toyota Jeep, and since then has been nicknamed the Moose Pig and Iron Pig over the years. This is the vehicle that initially was built for the US military. It has a reputation for handling tough terrain, and it's one of the world's fastest SUVs. As a testimony to the longevity of this vehicle, a Swiss couple broke the Guinness World Record for traveling around the world in their 1982 Toyota Land Cruiser, which surpassed 460,000 miles and is still running. Well, anyway, last year, Toyota hinted the Land Cruiser may again return to the U.S. Initial reports said the new Land Cruiser would be based on the Land Cruiser Prado, which is also known as the Lexus GX. And recently, a new Land Cruiser was spotted in Indiana. Rumor has it it's a test vehicle. But here's the thing. It's a J300 series model of the Land Cruiser. This model has already been available overseas for the rest of the world, just not here in the States. And it rides on a new platform that's used in the recent redesigns of the Toyota Sequoia, Tundra, and Lexus LX. So what does all this mean? Today we're looking at why Toyota killed the Land Cruiser in the U.S. a few years back and whether it's making a comeback. To fully appreciate how and why the Toyota Land Cruiser got to the state of non-existence in the U.S. right now, we have to rewind a bit. Not many people know this, but back in 1951, the first ever Land Cruiser was actually made for the military. The story goes that the Japanese Imperial Army was using the Kuragane Type 95 four-wheel drive reconnaissance car, but then they occupied the Philippines in 1941, and there they discovered an American Willys MB Jeep. They sent it to Japan, where the military then ordered Toyota to make a similar vehicle, but specifically mandated it to look nothing like the American Jeep. So Toyota started development and so forth. It made so much headway, even the Japanese police became the first customer of the Land Cruiser. Fast forward to the Korean War. North Korea invaded South. That was back in June 1950. At the time, the U.S. was still occupying Japan. So the U.S. military asked Japan to develop the local military truck. By then, Toyota developed the military truck prototype. It was the Toyota Jeep BJ. The letter B stood stood for Toyota B-Series engine, and the letter J stood for Jeep. But then Toyota got in trouble because, as it turns out, the company Willys had trademarked the word Jeep. In response, Toyota renamed the vehicle, and that's how the Land Cruiser nameplate was born. This military-grade vehicle came equipped with a 3.4-liter six-cylinder engine paired with a four-ton truck suspension system. Just four years later, in 1955, the first-generation Land Cruiser was released for civilians, the J-20 and J-30. But it didn't reach American soil until 1958. That's the year after Toyota Motor Sales USA was formed. In its first year in America, Toyota sold only one Land Cruiser and 287 Toyo Pet Crown Sedan. The Land Cruiser had F-type inline six engine, which displaced 3.9 liters. The civilian version of the Land Cruiser had integrated headlights, a more rounded exterior, and a spacious cabin. But even though the Land Cruiser was released in long and short wheelbase, it only had a top speed of around 34 miles an hour. That wouldn't cut the mustard today. Now, the second generation of the Land Cruiser was introduced in 1960 and actually stuck around until 1966, the J40. Despite the initial limited demand for the Land Cruiser, actually, this generation saw the vehicle become Toyota's best-selling vehicle in the United States. This generation had a new rectangular-shaped exterior, circular headlights, and a front radiator grille. The indicators also got moved to the front wings. And this new Land Cruiser came with added engine options that were available, including a four-cylinder gas and diesel engine. And it came in three different trims, full economy and moderate drivability. Whatever that means, this series came with four different wheelbase options and a manual transmission system with six gears, three gears for driving on roads, and three were for off-roading. By the time 1967 rolled around, Toyota was ready to introduce the third generation, the J40 and J50. This generation stuck around till 1979. It was especially popular among consumers living in higher temperature areas. That's because a brand new air conditioning system was introduced in 1979. That same year, power steering was also introduced in the series. This new Land Cruiser model came with lots of other changes. In fact, there were so many changes that it almost looked like a completely different vehicle compared to the previous models. The third Third generation Land Cruiser was painted in a two-tone color. The car frame was much more rounded shape, and on top of that, the series didn't have the signature Land Cruiser rear hatch. 
In 1980, the fourth generation Land Cruiser was introduced and it stayed for nine years. The J60 and J70. We're talking a four door midsize SUVs that featured a minimalist dashboard. The front of the Land Cruiser looks similar to the front of the 40 series. The vehicle got its power from a 4.2 liter V6 engine and a five speed manual transmission system. It also came with multiple diesel engine options. The instrument cluster back then was super simple. Just three indicators, fuel level, speedometer, and cooling temperature. Then in 1989, the fifth generation was introduced. It lasted until 1997, the J80. Actually, this generation is known as one of the most powerful off-roading vehicles manufactured by Toyota to date. It was famous for its advanced safety and tech features that made it suitable for different types of terrain. I'm talking a V6 engine that pumped out 215 horsepower and got its vehicle up to a top speed of 118 miles per hour. And its all-wheel drivetrain was accompanied by a five-speed manual transmission system. 1998 saw the launch of the sixth generation, which stuck around till 2007. This J100 Land Cruiser was built on a wider wheelbase and had larger cabin space. The exterior differed from previous models. The front end of this Land Cruiser was tall and flat. That gave you a good view of the road, and large fenders were featured on the front and rear tires to ensure the aerodynamics of the vehicle. The dashboard was more complex than before. We're talking a choice of fabric or leather interior options. When you lifted up the hood of this Land Cruiser, consumers were offered a 4.7 liter gasoline powered V8 and a 4.2 liter inline six turbo diesel engine. The J105 was also introduced in this generation. It was more rugged and had more prominent curves and lines that ran rear to front end. The last generation of the Land Cruiser in the U.S. was the seventh generation. It was introduced back in 2008 until 2021, the J200. This Land Cruiser got nicknamed the Toyota V8, and that's why many fans still call it around the world. This generation was equipped with off-roading and driver assist features. It also had all the bells and whistles like four-zone climate control, a smart start system, airbags, and a downhill assist system. Obviously, this one had the V8, hence the nickname, and it could drive up to 124 miles an hour. The all-wheel drive drivetrain system was accompanied by a five-speed automatic transmission system. 2015 saw a major facelift. I'm talking a more modern-looking exterior with redesigned bumpers, headlights, hoods, and grille. It also got a new safety features like collision avoidance system, Toyota Safety Sense, and a lane mitigation system. The inside got a facelift, too. Inside, there were now heated, power steering, leather upholstery, ventilated seats, keyless entry system, and push-button start. Here's the thing. This vehicle was popular in many parts of the world, but sadly not so much in the U.S. Back in 2019, Toyota was selling just over 3,000 Land Cruisers a year in the States. To put that in perspective, compare that to Australia, which is the Land Cruiser's largest market. In Australia, Toyota sells over 42,000 Land Cruisers a year. That's more than 13 times the amounts in the United States. The fact that it sells in Australia speaks volumes about this vehicle, because Australia is known to have some of the toughest terrains. The Land Land Cruiser didn't reach its full potential here in the States, even though it was popular in other countries around the world. And so, Toyota discontinued the Land Cruiser in the U.S. in 2021. By the way, the Land Cruiser is more popular in Japan than it was in the U.S. Right now, if you're in Japan, you want a Land Cruiser, there's a four-year wait list. Part of the reason is due to supply chain disruption and chip shortages. Anyway, several months ago, Toyota said that it's more than likely that the Land Cruiser nameplate would return to the U.S. at some point. But it didn't give any specific dates. Even without any official dates in Toyota, there is a rumor that the Land Cruiser may return to the U.S. for the 2024 model year. But apparently, it won't be the J300 model. It's expected to be the new version of the smaller and cheaper Land Cruiser Prado, which is actually being sold here in the States as the Lexus GX. There's a lot of rumors flying around about the powertrain. Right now, the Lexus GX comes in a 4.6 liter V8. But one rumor has it that the new Land Cruiser might have the same 2.4 liter inline four hybrid max powertrain that's used in the Toyota Crown and other vehicles. If that proves true, this means it could pump out anywhere from 340 to 350 horsepower and 400 pound feet of torque, which is not a far cry from the 2021 Land Cruiser with 5.7 liter V8 engine. A few weeks ago, a Lexus dealership employee in Indiana posted pictures of a J300 Toyota Land Cruiser with the Michigan manufacturer plate. This Land Cruiser was seen on the back of a transporter with a BMW M4 and a pair of Jeep Wranglers. The problem is, this Land Cruiser isn't even supposed to exist in the U.S. yet. The Lexus employee claimed that the Land Cruiser was a test vehicle. Toyota later commented and said that the Land Cruiser in the photo wasn't on its way to the 2023 Chicago Auto Show, even though it was nearby. But look, the thing about Toyota is that it loves to have media 
sneak peeks and teasers for upcoming vehicles. So this could just be another publicity stunt. So anyway, will the Land Cruiser ever hit the American roads again? If you ask me, I'll say it's possible. SUVs as a market are more competitive than ever before, so it would make sense. In fact, last year, Jack Hollis, the executive VP of sales for Toyota Motor North America, was asked if Toyota would ever bring the Land Cruiser back to the US, and he said that it's likely. But now you tell me, are you voting for the Land Cruisers to come back? If you've ever gotten behind the wheel of a Land Cruiser before, what was your experience? Please share by commenting below. If you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for your support.